The Defensive Player of the Year award has been a hot contentious topic this season, more so than previous years, even previous decades. Everyone seems to want it and are making subtle and not so subtle cases for it. But there's two players heads and shoulders above the masses contending for this award, Ben Simmons and Rudy Gobert. Each are having a spectacular defensive season and it's really hard to gauge who's having the better one at face value. So we're going to be doing a deep dive, analyzing their defense by looking at the numbers, conducting the eye test and breaking it all down so you have all the information you need to make an educated opinion on who the 2021 Defensive Player of the Year should be. And guys, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. The channel is really growing right now, so join the community. With that being said, let's get into the video. Ben Simmons this season has been campaigning hard for the Defensive Player of the Year trophy, and a lot of it has been talking smack and disparaging the defensive works of Rudy Gobert. There's one in specific that caused NBA Twitter to erupt. I loved it when I saw Rudy was guarding me. I loved being able to go at somebody like that. I felt like it was a little bit of a disrespect putting him on me, but it is what it is. He then doubled down on these comments when he went on ESPN's The Jump by saying this. He guarded me in Utah. And? I had 42. And, I'm not, and apparently I'm not a scorer, so it is what it is. Damn! Simmons does have a point. He is by no means a scorer and did manage to drop a career high 42 in Utah. But it wasn't Rudy who was guarding him in majority of these possessions. In fact, when Gobert guarded him, Simmons shot 3 of 7 from the field and turned the ball over 3 times. The rest of the other Jazz on the other hand were only able to get him to turn the ball over one other time. Yes, you heard me right. The game Simmons and fans use as a talking point on why Gobert is undeserving of this award, Rudy not only guarded Simmons the best of all Jazz players, but played terrific defense on him. This hasn't stopped Ben from constantly throwing shade at the two-time Defensive Player of the Year winner. And even though it's annoying, I don't blame him. The Defensive Player of the Year award historically has been a big man award. In fact, only one point guard since the inception of the award has won it. And that's Gary Payton. History is against Simmons. But then again, Simmons isn't your typical point guard. He's 6'11", taller than the average center, but is agile as a guard. And that's a point he always harps on, that he's able to guard 1 through 5 unlike Gobert. Which is true, when looking at Basketball Index's defensive versatility data, which tells us how players are being deployed on defense, Simmons ranks 7th in the league, while Gobert ranks 181st. But no, this metric is a measure of how players are being deployed, not their effectiveness in guarding various positions. Regardless though, with the eye test, it is clear Simmons far surpasses Gobert guarding the perimeter. He's actually able to keep up with these players on drives and disrupt their shooting. Just look at how he guards Lillard. He's defending him all the way up at the logo with tight on-ball pressure. Usually players will give a little bit of space so when Lillard drives they have less ground to make up to contest the shot. Simmons on the other hand presses right up on Lillard because he knows if Lillard blows by him his massive wingspan can still help him contest the shot. Now look at this clip. We all know how deadly Damian Lillard's step back is. It has crushed the hearts of many. But against Simmons, it's ineffective. He's just so long that Lillard can't get the space he needs to let his shot fly smoothly. Big Ben is literally a cheat code because after guarding up the smallest and most agile player on the court, in the same game, he can go down to the paint and defend the tallest player on the court. This is something Rudy can't do. Where he excels is playing team defense. The Utah Jazz's whole defensive identity rests on the shoulder of Gobert. Without him, they are one of the worst defensive teams in the league. With him, they are the best. That speaks volume. Gobert's defensive impact on the game is unmatched. His defensive LeBron, which is a metric that measures defensive impact per 100 possession, he is number one in the league. Simmons is 18th. We looked at other metrics too, like defensive Raptor, defensive win share, defensive box plus minus, defensive rating, and Gobert is not only ahead of Simmons in all these categories, but he is number one in each and every one of them. 
You may not be a fan of analytics, but these are very telling stats of a player's contributions on the defensive end. And analytically, Gobert is the superior defender. He wrecks havoc on the defensive end. He's massive, can see plays before they develop, and his recovery time is superb. I can't tell you how many times I've seen him get beat off the dribble just to swat the player at the rim. For voters, it's honestly a tough decision to make. Eye test wise, Simmons gets the edge, but statistically, it's not even a question. The two dominate the game defensively in such different ways and it's so hard to gauge who's having the better defensive season. Gobert mainly works in the interior, playing a more team oriented defense, while Simmons is mainly on the perimeter, playing a less team oriented defense. It's really going to get to the nitty gritty to see who gets the award, so let's do that. Like I said before, Gobert anchors the Utah Jazz's entire defense. They're the best defense in the league when he's on the court, and when they are without him, they are the second worst in the league. The 76ers on the other hand are still a top 2 defensive team without Simmons, because Embiid is so good at protecting the rim. And the hard truth is, insane perimeter defense doesn't carry the same value as insane interior defense. The perfect example of this is, if you remove Embiid from the 76ers, the team will suffer far more defensively than if you remove Simmons. Being an elite interior defender allows your perimeter defender to go all out on shooters and cheat off of you, because if they're blown by, they know you have their back. This allows Simmons to put on very high on ball pressure. Another thing that might bite Simmons in the race is he's playing with another defensive player of the year candidate, while Utah's best defender outside of Gobert is Royce O'Neal, who by all accord is a good defensive player, but not at the level to be considered for those honors. Gobert has also played 61 of possible 62 games this season, while Simmons has missed 12. I think that should be factored into your decision making process. And let's face it guys, this race is one of the tightest races in recent memory, and it's hard to pick one answer, but with all these facts presented, who would you say is the defensive player of the year? Comment it down below. Personally, I would say it's Gobert. He's ahead in more categories and is simply doing more with less. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.